Hello, if it's anybody there. I hope you're having a great evening. Okay, let's see what we have. Let's go live. Hi. How you guys doing? Okay, we got Miss Kia is here. Debbie Epps, good evening. Sylvia Standifer is here. Hi, Naira. Miss B. Washington. Denise Backyard Garden. Hey, Auntia. Orchids for Dummies. I'm glad you made it. Hallelujah is right. Hi, Erica. Hey, Dan. Bless Two is here. Barb Brownlee is here. Hi, Larita. How are you? She Shell is here. Thank you so much for coming. A Fisher Frontier Farms is here. Sheila McElroy is here. And Quintella is here. Louisiana Gardening Guru, thank you so much. Veggie Farm is here. Okay. Thank you, Quintella. Southern Red Sugar, good to see you. Roots, shoots, and garden boots. Hey, Yankee sister is in the house. From snowy Connecticut. Deborah White is here. All right. Yeah, you all really been getting hit with the snow. I grew up in Indiana, full, uh, 34 miles from Chicago. Buses didn't take us to school. We had to wear our snow suits and walk in the snow. And when I used to tell my children about it when they were little, yeah, yeah, you walk four miles in the snow and you couldn't see your way. But it's really true. They didn't take no snow days like they do nowadays. So they, they, uh, they, be, uh, I'm telling you, they be, hey, best yet, they've been getting a lot of snow in the New York area. New York. Love Ladies Gardening Projects and more is here. All right. Bless two said they got 10 inches of snow. Wow. I've been real busy, stinky puddle ranch, but I'm doing pretty good. I kind of wore myself out yesterday uh, doing the uh, doormat and foliar spray. I did more than what I let you all see in the video. Because as I was going along spraying, you might have noticed I was bending off some branches uh, to prune. And, uh, hey, Peanut. Sunny and 55 here. Yeah, your weather in Louisiana is very similar to ours, Peanut. We had uh, peanut peppers. We had 73 degrees uh, Saturday. And then Sunday, it was about 52, 53. And tomorrow's going to be a good day because I got to get a lot of uh, gardening stuff done. Hi, Louisiana Gardening Guru. She's watching and listening very well, very good. And we got some snow in um, North Texas for the first time mm, about a month ago, but it didn't stay. It was only here for a few hours. All right. Okay, I'm going to go back. 
And I'm going to do a little presentation for you guys with the seedlings that I have uh, germinated. You guys know I started a few days after uh, New Year's. And my goal, this is phase one that I've started. And my goal is to have everything in the greenhouse by March 1st. So this is February. So I'm now beginning to start, well, I'm getting ready tomorrow to start phase two of my seeds. And just let me share with you guys, if you are new, I bit off way more than I could chew last year during the pandemic. The Holy Spirit hit me and I just went berserk ordering a lot of soil because I was too terrified to go out in stores and I was paying extra for delivery fees and all that kind of stuff. I even... Uh, damaged my lungs with too much bleach, inhaling too much bleach, because at the, at the beginning of the pandemic, we didn't know how you contracted the virus. And it was reported that you, it could be on surfaces. And then later, as they got into it and more testing, they said that it wouldn't stay on surfaces like this for a few days. So I didn't have to wipe all that stuff out. I could have just kept it outside or area in the house that I don't go into, like the foyer. And uh, so I made the bleach solution too strong and I damaged my lungs. So now um, I went out yesterday to Dollar Tree and I made a little video and I'll share with you uh, maybe tomorrow morning what I bought or the next day. But I was paranoid to go in the stores. Not like so paranoid that I needed uh, medication. I was paranoid to the fact if I didn't have to go out, I wasn't going. And my daughter-in-law, my oldest son's wife, she drove all the way, I don't know, some of you live in this area, she drove about 35 miles to bring me some laundry detergent. She didn't have to do that. She said, you need anything? I said, yeah, well, I forgot to order laundry detergent. She said, I'll order some for you. I said, okay, sweetie, thank you. Do you know she found it on sale in her area in Denton, and she just drove over here, rang the doorbell to let me know that it was out there, and... You know, I got that mixed up. It wasn't laundry detergent. It was toilet paper and paper towels. And my son-in-law brought me uh, soap, laundry detergent, and bleach. But people were real nice to me. Because uh, I said, I'm not going nowhere. Because y'all know I take a whole lot of medication. If, and if I get this virus, I'm going to die. So I didn't go out. <laughs> Very rare. But getting back to what I was saying earlier... When I went into, I'm not going to name the stores, I went to two grocery stores the night that they told us that we had to be in, if, unless you were an essential worker, you couldn't go out unless you had uh, like emergency, like a doctor's appointment, something like that. And you remember, the city just shut down. And they were even checking people's ID at certain checkpoints around my city to make sure people just wasn't on the road, you know, for no reason. And when I went into those two stores, they had jacked the prices up so high that I said, no, not my friends, not my senior citizen friends. And I, I was inspired to start an emergency garden. So I grew a whole lot of food and I didn't do a lot of the giving away on, uh, on video. But you all saw massive amounts of food that I uh, harvested. So I feel like I did my part. And I was inspired by my son, my oldest son, to um, relaunch my product line on a very small scale. And he not only inspired me, he and his wife, he, he financially backed me. And uh, so now... I want you all to see all the fruit trees and vines and elderberry bushes and all this stuff that I have. And I haven't had anybody to help me maintain it because I have six grandchildren. They will come and we'll order pizza or make cookies or something and they will help me clean up. So I haven't had anybody pulling weeds and doing all that bend down work that I don't do like I used to. So, um, I see a super chat up here, and I, I'm sure my moderators probably already thank you, but I want to thank you, too. 
And uh, I'll go back and look at it later. And so when I shared the a garden, the food for it yesterday, it usually doesn't look that bad. But you got to understand that it was the pandemic because I usually don't have weeds. And excuse me, and bless their heart, I had some people to tell me, you know, how to get rid of it. And they didn't realize that I already know. I don't know everything, but I had already smothered out the grass and the weeds and put cardboard down. And I have up to 12 inches in some areas of wood chips. And uh, I didn't have that grass. That just all came up because I wasn't staying on top of it. By the way, have any of you all drank this? This is a naturally sparkling water. It's by LaCroix. One of my senior citizen friends got it for me. And what I like about it is when you need to have a little refreshing drink with a little bubbly in it, but it has no sugar, no diet sugar, no sodium, because I have kidney disease. And um, it's real refreshing. So it doesn't have any calories. It won't make your uh, glycemic diabetic level go up or anything. So, yeah, so because I have a lot of uh, health issues, I don't let that stop me from doing what I need to do. And so you saw a lot of um, bad parts of the food forest that I usually keep up, but I haven't been able to do it because I've had a lot on my plate. But uh, I didn't feel bad showing it to you because you got to know if this is what you want to do. I dreamed of having a food forest. All while I was working, okay? And I said, when I retire, I'm going to give me a lot of fruit trees. And I'm going to have this organic food forest. And so right now, it looks a little bearing. But you all just wait until about April. And when I shoot it again, you compare what it looked like now to what it's going to look like. God is so good. He's amazing because he created everything so uniquely and so differently. And it's just amazing that you can buy an unrooted, I mean, pardon me, a rooted twig and put it in a container, container and three or four years later, you start getting some fruit. It's just a beautiful thing. Or you can just plant one seed. And here's my mammoth sunflower. And you guys know this, this little flower is going to get about 10 feet tall and make a great big old sunflower with a head bigger than my grandchildren. And they just love to watch it. So I'm going to share with you all some of my seedlings. And I've decided, because sometimes you all come in here. Hi, Erica. You come in here and you say, what products? Hi, Denise Backyard Garden. I don't know if I spoke to you already. Sheila Mac I, McElroy. I, 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 Elroy, I did you. Okay, and then you come and you say, what products? And some people don't know. 27 inches of snow in New Jersey. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Tia, for telling everybody. If you have a question, put it in our caps and I'll get to it. The first thing I'm going to do is... Oh, yeah. I was saying about some people don't know about the products that I make, the all-natural products that I make. So every live, I'm going to do introduce two or three products and, and tell you a little bit about it. I'm not going to be pushing you uh, into buying it. You can buy it if you want to. Um, I consider that a blessing, but I don't want you to think you, you're going to come in here every week and I'm just going to be with a big uh, sales pitch because not, I'm not all about it because the product speaks for themselves. Okay, hi, gardening and cocktails. Hey, Quan's Garden, good to see you. Okay, hey, Tommy. Tommy is my new moderator. Okay, very good. So, yeah, try some of these sparkling waters. It's really good for you, and you don't, you're not drinking all that sugar all the time. And I felt a little parched, <laughs> so I need to get a little water in me. Okay, so I showed you the sunflower. And I just use this reusable cup. And I want to show you how quickly this sunflower grows. You, you see it here. Now, you all know that I did this tray. Remember this? I did that do-it-yourself tray. 
and I had the sunflowers right over here, and they came up in one day. And I've removed everything that has come up, and I'm going to show them with you. Show it with you. And it's been less than a week, right? So here's the mammy sunflower. Now I want you to look up under here real close. Do you all see those roots coming through? Can you see it? So the roots are coming through already. So that means I'm probably going to pot up to either here or here. Because I save all of my cups, all of my containers. So that's coming through really quick. Can you see them little white roots? I didn't see anybody say yeah. Okay, great. So that's fast. That is not even seven days old. Here are my zinnias. These are two weeks old. They're not coming through yet. Yeah, one, one is. One little small root right there. But they can stay in here a little bit longer. But they will make a huge plant. These are all heirloom zinnias, so they're not like the little ones you get at the dollar store. And ain't nothing wrong with them because I grow some of those too. I'm just saying, this one little cluster I could put in a five-gallon bucket and, and, and the roots will go all the way down to the bottom. Here is, let me get your questions in a minute. Is that garden with Skinny Boy Randy in here? Hello, how you doing? Here, this was out of here. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I'm sorry. That was uh, basil. Here's giant parsley. It's about two weeks old. Parsley grows slow. Okay, here is another type of uh, basil. I've got two of them. Here's the red basil that came up in three days in that uh, do-it-yourself kit. So I've got some regular basil and small basil. And then I think I got giant basil around here too. Okay, and now I'm going to show you all of my tomatoes. The first one I'm going to show you is Early Girl and Celebrity. And the reason why I grow these is because they're very heat tolerant. Okay, can y'all see that? I gave them a little um, fermented comfrey, weak, weak, weak solution. So they're going to start greening up because they was kind of yellow. And let me share this with you. You see these first leaves that come out? You could cut them off or you could pinch them off because they're going to drop off anyway. It's a little pearl from Cheryl. Okay? They won't get real green. They'll just start withering away and dying. So early girl and celebrity are very tolerant to heat. Now, here's one that I grew to for a big, it's called a great white, but it's green. And you'll know when it's ripe because it just gets a little tinge of uh, yellow and you can feel it, the texture of it. It's real soft. It makes a really good fried green tomato when you want to have a large slice. And it's doing good. And so here, I'm not going to do all of them, but I'm going to show you. The first leaves... They're completely different. The shape of it, it'll just give you some nourishment, okay? Give the, your plant some nourishment, but eventually it's gonna drop off. So now that I moved it out of seed starting mix to potting mix, it has some more fertilizer in there as well as the uh, tea, the comfrey tea. Here is my brandy wine. If you look close, you can see I nipped these leaves off before I started the live. And then I have Amanda. Somebody corrected me. Guys, I pronounced a lot of words wrong. But this one, I just, I didn't write it down and I just remembered it was Amanda. And I think I said Amanda. And I know I have to get better about that because people will try to Google it and want to buy it. So you can see I wrote Amanda on here, but it's Amanda Orange. And I liked it because it was a real big fruit. Now, look here. 
when I get a lot of them clustered like this, I will pick one or two of the best ones. And I'm going to see if I can do this on camera. So I'm going to keep this one here. And I'm going to keep this one here. And I'm not going to pull it up and, and disrupt the roots. I'm just going to cut it off. And I will just have two together and I'll probably put it in a seven gallon bucket. Okay, everybody with me? Now, here's my brandy wine. Did I say this one already? Because I took the two leaves off of it. I think I did. Yeah, I said brandy wine. And here is my mortgage lifter. And I'm going to keep two of them and I'm going to remove two. You can see, I'm just going to nip it off. Don't pull them out. Now you can uh, gently separate them sometimes, but then sometimes they'll get a little damaged. So I'm only going to keep these two. And again, I'll put it in a five, seven gallon pot. Mortgage lifter gets really big. I'll probably go in a bigger pot than that. But I don't go any lower than a five gallon for one plant. Hey, Miss Irene from my permaculture garden. Okay, I'm only going to grow one pepper, this plant, new, new pepper. And this is a horizon orange pepper. It's real sweet and my grandchildren love it, especially Bria. Peppers take a little longer to grow. So if you're in zone eight on up, you should have your pepper seeds sown. If you in seven on down, you got a, you know, a little while to play with them. But pepper seeds take a long time to germinate, about two weeks, and it takes a long time for them to grow. And I'll be showing you how I top them off and all, everything that I do. But the reason why I'm only growing one variety, and I got a couple of these, is because in my greenhouse, I have a whole row of peppers and then I have a five-year-old tree and a two-year-old tree. Okay? Also, in this tray here was white lettuce. Came up in about two days. I pot it up as soon as I can, move them around. Uh, this is the red basil. And you guys know that I grow lots and lots of marigolds. Right behind me. Marigold seeds from last year's garden. Okay? So I grow a lot of marigolds. One, they kill or destroy nematodes, the bad nematodes. There are two types of nematodes, beneficial and non-beneficial. And they kill the non-beneficial the non ones, the bad ones. And also, they will attract white flies. So you can use your marigolds as your trap plant. Now, I usually plant them all intertwined in my garden beds. I think I'm going to do something different this year. I'm going to put a few in there around with my society garlic around the border of the uh, garden beds. But I think I'm going to put some in pots where I can move them where I need them to be. Make sense? Okay, just want to make sense. Here are my zinnias. I think I've mentioned this already that I will put this in a gray big pot because I only had one seed to come up in a raised garden bed this fall and it went nuts. I mean, it really grew vigorously where I had planted two cherry trees. I had them in pots for two years and then I put them in... Excuse me, I got I got this um, private, uh, you know, protection, make out for you, whatever it is. So, yeah, so this will go in at least a seven-gallon pot. I'm going to get your questions in a minute. I'm just going to show you, go through what I have. Now, let's talk about the Texas Star Hot Business. That is a tricky one, guys, because it takes a long time to germinate. And I, I made sure that if you got your seeds early, I told you to put them into the refrigerator at least 40 degrees or lower because it has to go through stratification, the, like the changes of the season. 
But it's weird because this plant right here, now it, take, it can take a month to two months, three months for it to, germ, to see to germinate. Usually in about a month to six weeks. This seed germinated in one day. And it was 2017 seeds. So for the longest time, I only had that one hibiscus seed to germinate. Now, this is why I like the clear cups. You see that root definition? You can see it good. Let me, let me turn around like this side. You can really see it. See that, guys? And so, I wet it in here. You see the water there? Yep, you can see the water. Because the last time I fed it, that uh, uh, comfrey. And somebody asked me about comfrey yesterday in my comments. And I said, I'll discuss it today. So, it can drain. So that one germinated in a few days, and then it took forever for the rest of them to germinate. So I have one here, and I know exactly what it is because I got TSH, uh, Texas High Biscuits 2020. The uh, first one I showed you was 2017. Here is another one, 2020 seed. This is another one, 2020 seed. Now, these two that I'm getting ready to show you has a sentimental um, um, value to me. Because last, not this past Thanksgiving, but the Thanksgiving before in 2019, my mother's only surviving sister passed, my aunt. And I went up there for her funeral, and it was cold, you know, because it's close to Chicago. Y'all know it's cold in Gary, Indiana. And uh, she had seed pods on her huge, hearty, non-tropical hibiscus. So I grew some, but they didn't do too well. I don't know why. I, I, know, I think I know why. Spider mites. But anyway, I got two of those seeds to germinate. It only took those seeds two weeks. This one. And I have one here. I'm just going to see the difference in the root structure. So I'm very, very excited about it. And you can see it says Lois. Now, my aunts, we couldn't call them Aunt Lois until we got real grown and old and had kids. They were the cool aunts. You all think you all stepped today. Hmm. I forgot what they called the bop or something. They were so cool. And if we saw them out in public, we better not say auntie. Because they thought they were so young and hip. And they were. Sharp, sharp dressers. And they could dance. And so we called her by her first name. So that's why I don't have Aunt Lois on here. I have Lois. Okay, so that's all of the seeds that I wanted to share with you today. My seedlings. And I got plenty of them in cups over here. And over here, let me, let me move it up a little bit. Can y'all see up there? And then I'm going to move it over here. You all can see over there as well. I got a lot of seedlings. Now, these are all going to go out to the greenhouse the end of this month. And then this week, I'll start on phase two. And, and I'm going to get your questions, but I want to tell you what I'm going to do. I took inventory. You remember I did a video with Bria in the slash pantry slash old grow room? And then I took an inventory of what I had in the freezer. I don't need a lot. So this summer, the only thing I'm going to grow after June because it gets so hot down here that after June, I don't play around trying to keep tomatoes alive to have a second coming of them. <laughs> I almost said second coming of Jesus. Lord, forgive me. I'm trying to have a second coming of tomato crops in, um, um, in the fall. I just start more seedlings. I used to clone them and root the branches, the suckers, as the people call them. I don't do that anymore. I harvest everything by the second week of June because it gets so hot 
that your flowers won't bloom in Texas. So I don't keep trying to shade mine. I pull them up, replenish the soil with uh, compost. And then this year I'm going to put okra in one bed and eggplant in the other bed because that's all I need. And in my containers, I'm going to do my Beauregard sweet potatoes. I'm not going to be trying to do squash and zucchini and all that kind of stuff that has an issue with um, squash vine border. I'm not going to try to do watermelon, uh, stepping all over the vine. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm going to grow what grows well for me, and that is easy for me because I still have my company to run. I hope you all understand that. Okay, yeah, Randy said, ha ha, second coming. We know what you mean. Yeah, uh, thank you. My husband's about to put me out for taking over all his pretty green grass. You can't eat grass. I know, Tia. Let me tell, share with this with you and I'll get your questions. When I think about all the years that I pulled up weeds, because I wanted to have this immaculate grass. And if you knew, my, I wish my children were in here, um, they would tell you that my husband manicured the lawn. It was so pretty. Now, I have lawn service now. And I used to have them to do the back before I added all the fruit trees. But I don't do it anymore because they started eating my fruit. So I just smothered all the grass out. There was something back here I wanted to show you. Oh, yes, I know. Even while I'm talking, my mind just spins. I want to, oh, I'm moving move them over here. I ordered some seeds from Dan's Permaculture Food Forest off of his uh, Etsy store. Because I've been wanting to try the Jamaican sorrel. And it is a, a cousin to hibiscus. The older I get, the more I'm getting into health and nutrition, and growing food for medicinal purposes. Now, I know y'all wonder where she going with this. I saw Dan had posted something, and I said, do you got any, um, you don't have any of those Italian um, dandelion seeds on your Etsy store? He said, I'll send you some, Lady Cheryl, and he sure did. All I need is a few, it's a nice amount in there. And these had like a red vein running through them. And I saw two big dandelion weeds when I was spraying for the uh, foliar spray for the you know insects with the neem oil yesterday. And I'm going to let them grow too. Because no longer I'm going to pull up the dandelions because I was doing some research, guys. Do you know they make wine out of dandelion? And do you know it wasn't until the late 1800s that people could, didn't even classify it as a weed? And it's the cousin to the sunflower. And it's the first... Flowers that birds, not birds, I'm trying to say bees, are attracted to and feed off of early spring, late winter. So, yeah, and people make salve out of it and ointments out of it. And they say that the wine that you make out of it tastes like honey. So I'm going to grow some dandelions. I'm going to do the Italian ones. That way I'll know it's a little bit different. And then he's sent me two small gifts. Now, if y'all order something, don't be thinking y'all might get what, what I got. You know, I got, I'm, I, I got it like that. <laughs> I don't want you to think Dad going to send you all these things because he might not know y'all like that. <laughs> okay? But he sent me some Ethiopian kale. And it's heat tolerant because he's over there in Florida. And cranberry hibiscus. So I'm going to be, that's going to be in my phase two. And then also, I put some seeds out here to share with you the other things that I'm going to grow. And here they're coming. And by the way, because I've been self-employed for a very long time, except when I was teaching beauty school, I've always owned hair salons. And I still do three customers now. But um, one of those customers, I told her I wasn't going to buy any seeds. And she said, and I said, Dan, Dan's Permaculture Food Force, and y'all need to go and check him out because he's growing a lot of exotic stuff. 
I saw him with this tattoo. And she said, where do you get it from? I said, Baker Creek, I'm not buying no seeds. Two weeks later, you know, that lady came into the beauty shop. I have a beauty salon in my home. Separate interests, everything. She brought me these seeds. She ordered them. She sure did. So that's going to be in my second phase, along with all these hibiscus and sorrel and dandelions. And then I'm going to do some arugula. After June, it'll be bitter, but I'm going to get it in, out on the ground. I'm going to direct sow these. And then... Guys, we always got to have a lot of things to pollinate our fruit trees and bushes. And so I'm going to do milkweed. And I have some that comes back every year. And this is a purple coneflower. And I have this to come back every year. But I want to put some where I started another part of the food forest where I transplanted um, apple trees. Uh, in the ground and where my plum trees are. And then this is the orange milkweed. So I got the purple milkweed, orange milkweed. And this is going to be my second um, second round of seeds along with the eggplant. I'm going to grow a couple varieties of them. Mostly black beauty. I love that. And I love uh, a spineless okra. Start with a seed. Cleanse them. Something like that. Okay. So Sewing Balance says she grows and loves dandelion and cra cra cranberry a hibiscus. Hey, Brenda. I hope you saw uh, the tea that, because you asked me about making the um, hibiscus tea. And I thought about you and me and Bria drank some tea the other day. I think it was Friday. And then um, Miss B. Washington said, glad you got it like that. Yeah, don't be thinking they ain't going to send y'all a bunch of seeds. Hey, Lorraine. So, um, <laughs> but I'm thankful for, for him doing me that. And another thing, I want to give a shout out to Turf. Turf Therapy. He started off, he's a military guy. And he started off doing lawn care, and now he's into gardening. He sent me some um, dahlia bulbs that I'm getting ready to plant, and I'll do a video on, on it, okay? All right. Dandelion tea is delicious. I know my grandmother used to drink it. I don't know if it's true, but she used to say, drink this, it'll break your fever. But a lot of, her mother, her mother was Cherokee, Indian, and her father was African. So they, had, you know, brought a lot of the ethnic cultural things together in the way they raised my, my mom, and my mom passed a lot of that stuff down for me. Yes, okra loves hot weather, Sylvia. Yes, it does. And, and so when it's like 105, 115, whatever it's going to be this year, uh, I know that I can grow okra eggplant and um, okra eggplant and sweet potatoes. And somebody mentioned purslane. Yes, it's very underestimated UT, and I have that popping up all over my yard. And I pull it out of the wood chips and put it where I want it. And I like purslane. It has a lot of omega-3 in it, more than um, salmon or tuna. A lot of people don't know it, but people call it a weed. And we used to pull up purslane. And then here I am sprinkling seeds around of what I used to pull up. Isn't that crazy? But it is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to go back, and I'm going to see if I had any questions. Oh, thank you, skinny boy, Randy. Thank you, thank you so much. Ms. Washington said, hearing my plans for the garden is exciting. I can't wait to see it in real time. Yes, yeah, so it's best to grow that in June. Sonia, it depends on where you live. You, we can get our okra. I think you're talking about okra. Um, it depends on where you live. Hey, Essie, how you doing, my princess? I love how she calls me queen mother. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's good to see you. I watched some of your videos, your blog about the home repairs. Don't think just because I didn't uh, comment that I'm not watching. Because when I'm doing orders or I'm making up some shea butter or I'm making up my hair grow promoter or I'm pouring candles, I have it on the TV and I'll be listening and trying to look. Okay? So uh, I'm just a little bit busy, guys. So sometimes on the TV you can't comment. At least I don't know how to do it yet. Okay. 
So I'm going to go back to the top and see if I have any questions. So I told you what my second phase of seeds are going to be. I explained to you why I'm not going to grow a lot of pepper seeds because I did an experiment with a whole row of pepper seeds. I got about, um, I would say a 15 foot row of, you know, single layer of peppers, sweet peppers. And they are just so good. I'm, I'm just so thankful that my grandchildren like them. Okay, my job just retired me. Looking forward to spring. Zone 6A in Chicago. My first job, Dorothy, uh, besides the little summer program jobs, was uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. They hired me when I was 17. And I couldn't start until my birthday, July 4th. So that was my first job. We would catch, and I know you know about this, the South short train station all of the uh secretaries and office ladies would catch the train to go to work in chicago it was uh 222 dearborn and then they moved to michigan avenue those were the good old days when they had nurses um and hr departments inside of the big buildings they had the cafeteria and, and kind of have kind of have that anymore except like at hospitals and stuff but anyway um and then they moved to michigan avenue so that was my first job and all of the men would be on the train going to east chicago indiana to work in the steel mills it's an amazing. Okay, so I'm going back up, and I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss any questions. And then I will see if anybody has something to answer. Now, I am going to talk about comfrey tea, and I'm going to talk about five-gallon containers. That's all my notes over here to talk about. Because I promised somebody that I would talk about that. Okay, so I don't have any questions. Oh, okay, UT, 33-200, he said that yellow-orange top, that's one of, uh, Amanda is one of his top three. And I know he knows what he's talking about. Because he and his wife, man, they I call them the connoisseurs of peppers and tomatoes. They grow so many. And I love when they do the taste testing. Y'all go and check his channel out. And check everybody out. I always give, um, hey, I don't know. I always give opportunity for you to say where, if you have a channel. But, um, oh, that's I. Oh, that's Irene talking to UT. Um. I don't know what happened to my video last week. I put in three requests with YouTube to retrieve it. It somehow got deleted. Now, I don't think I accidentally deleted it. And I know Bria doesn't know how to pick up my phone, go on YouTube, and delete the video. But I've requested it. And I know at the time that that, phone, that video had like 800 likes. So I don't know what the deal is, but I hope that it comes back. Because we had a really, really good chat last night. I mean, last uh, Monday night. Yep, peppers take a while. Okay, Lady Cheryl, here we go. Have you found brandy wines to have more problems than other tomatoes? So, uh, heard someone say that a while back. No, I haven't grown them in a few years, and I, I'm growing some this year, but I don't think it was a particular reason why I stopped growing them. Uh, I just I have a lot of seeds, and I collect seeds, and I just like to rotate. There's only one that I grow every year, and again, that's the early girl and the celebrity, simply because they're very heat tolerant. Those are the last two plants that'll be surviving, because uh, usually when I go on vacation, it's around the second week in June if I go somewhere during the summer. So I have like a little schedule. Uh, but I've had no problems with the brandy wine. But I'll, you could be following me this year, and I'll let you know. Okay. Lady Cheryl has good content. Hit the like button. I know that's right, best yet. <laughs> okay, I'm in zone 8A, and a lot depends on the soil you are using also as to how well they germinate and when you place them under grow lights or not. Okay, I think you're asking a question for somebody, Tommy. Um, I missed it. Okay. We like the clear cups too. Yeah, and seeing the roots are very warring. And and uh, 
Yeah, it's cool, but the only thing about the clear cups, when you move them outside to acclimate them, make sure that you have a covered cup. Uh, who is that? Best yet. Make sure when you take them outside that you have something because the direct sunlight will cause a little, in my, in my opinion, I've had it to cause a little damage to the root and heat up real fast. So, so I think you should put another cup, cup up under there. Where can I get Texas hibiscus seeds? Well, you can order them off of eBay. I was giving the seeds away for just postage, and I sent the postage in an envelope kind of like what um, uh, Dan Permaculture Forest, Food Forest did. But mine is black, probably like the same, and it has this bubble inside because some people believe that the machines that the that they run things through at the post office can damage your seeds. And I do know that most of your professional seed companies will send your seeds in an envelope like this or a manila envelope that has um, the bubble wrap in it. So I was just asking for postage, but I don't have any more. I have a few seeds for myself and I'm going to help someone if they can't um, get them to germinate. Okay, but I want, I want you guys to know you cannot, okay, this is a 2019 seed, but I want you to look how wet that is. You cannot put your Texas Star Hibiscus seeds in here and put them on a heating pad and think that, you know, I'm just waiting for them to germinate. You got to keep them moist because the seed has to get moistened so it can crack out of that shell. So I put just a little water on the top because I don't have any roots down here yet. Okay? And then as soon as they pop up, then I put them under a light. Now, I know some of you put your seeds under a light. You know, I, I took a lot of classes and things like that. And most of your master gardeners, and I don't profess to be one, but I know a lot. <laughs> uh, they say keep them in the dark. And then put them under the light. Okay? But whatever works for you is what you should do. So, you can go to eBay and you can get hibiscus seeds. Now, they are selling little rooted plants like this for $25. Yep. It's in demand, the Texas Star Hibiscus. Because once you get it and you get it going, growing very well, you're going to see how hardy that it comes back every year. Okay. Okay. Ramona Jones is from S South Carolina. Very good. Thank you, Gardening Zebra. Thank you, Sonia, what I did to the room. Yeah, I made me, um, I bought me a little table. I'm just going to move back see if you can see a little bit. You know, I ordered for everything from Amazon. So I could turn it a little bit, and then I can reach. Instead of, you all ask me for about something, I have to get up and run go get, I can kind of like reach and get everything. And then I have a place for my laptop and, and everything. So thank you. And I put like a little plastic cover uh, or a little black stretchy tablecloth. Then I put a little black cover on it so I could just wipe it down. This is so much better than uh, what I had in my grow room because my grow room has ca had carpet on the floor. Okay, so now I'm missing my comments. Okay. Do you plant, put them in caps, sweetie. Tea loves greens. Do you plant tomatoes in previous spots you planted or changed? I rotate them. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't plant in the same spot every year unless I planted something else. Okay, let me give you an example. I have two large 8 by 10 beds, raised garden beds, and I have, I grow all year round. So I grow okra, peppers, 
and eggplants in those beds, but the first, uh, second week in June, I pull all the tomato plants up. Then I replenish the soil, put homemade compost, a little potty mix in there, and then I put some okra in there or some eggplant. You feel me? Then when that's almost done, I pull them up, refresh it again. Then I start my greens. I'm always starting some seeds. So in a way, you, I can say, yes, I use the same beds, but I don't grow the same thing all year long in those beds. They have a turnover at least three times. And this year, I'm not going to have to put any peppers because I didn't experiment through the pandemic of having what I call pepper place in my long greenhouse. It's 20 feet long. And I think that bed probably about 15 feet long. And I have a video, and you can just go down the list, or you can look at the playlist for peppers and tomatoes. And we got some huge peppers. I think Brian named them the, the Big Daddy Super Duper whatever. He's so funny. Bria's brother. Brenda Allen, if you're still waiting for your high mister seeds to germinate, like I said, you got to keep the, the soil moist. I don't know if you came in. Did you see all the ones that I showed you that I've got germinated? One, two, three, four. I got five. But they will germinate. I have more there. Hey, Susie, good to see you. Um, I know, your, your name, Susie. Susie, I think you have a refund. You have a, um, I'll look it up later. You have a gift, um, you have a credit balance on that nice order that you did for me for Christmas. I really appreciate you shopping uh, with me uh, in my company at Christmas. But I think you got like, we'll talk. I don't know. I, I, I'm sorry I haven't mentioned it sooner. Um, okay, so I, somebody help me. Tommy, what was I talking about? Hey, Angela. Angela Busy Bees Garden and Homestead. I just got to watching your video on um, propagating house plants. And what I liked about that video was you stated your goal of you wanted to have at least 100 plants to sell at your farmer's market. At local farmer's market. And that you had 60 already that you had propagated. Which is really cool. And I hope I don't offend you by what I'm getting ready to say. I don't think I will. Because I think I told you this before. I saw me in you. And I almost got tears in my eyes. Because I know I have influenced you. Because you see, you've seen me talking about I'm going to have 150 marigolds. So I'm not throwing all that soil away. And I'm going to get rid of it. You let me know if I'm right or not. And I remember saying, set your goals. I'm halfway there. I got this many marigolds. That was last year around this time. And, and before it was over with, I had it. Am I right or wrong, Angela? Well, she's still speaking to people. I saw me in you. The time it takes for the highest business to take. Who said, you want to know? This one came up in two days. These came up, in, this one came up in a week. These, it took three weeks. So it just depends. <laughs> Angela Busy Bees Garden Home said, praise God. You are my mentor. I, I, I. The Holy Spirit told me that. I said, I see me in her. <laughs> and it's, it's a beautiful thing because I didn't have what y'all have. I had my grandparents, old timers, the library, and books. There wasn't no social media. So whoever that was was saying they, uh, hi, Mallory. That they're here for the first time, or they're going to start a garden for the first time. Watch as many content creators that you can. 
And I say it every week. If they say something you don't like, I don't care if you don't like them, watch them anyway. Learn all you can. Because this is really, this is, this is, this is a good thing. This is a good thing that we're able to come here and communicate like this and learn from each other. Because who was that I saw? Miss Irene, Premaculture Food Force, adding some of that pearl light in her Jiffy C starting mix. Got me to thinking. They have some pearl light in here in the Jiffy C starting mix. But in my opinion, it's not enough. So I'm going to take mine, Miss Irene, the pe uh, pebbles to me are a little too big. So I'm going to take it and put it in my grinder where I grind up my turmeric, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to grind some up and when I do phase two of my seedlings, I'm going to add a little bit more perlite to it. So, and I learned that from you. So I'm just saying we all can learn from each other through this medium. And Garney with Skinny Boy Randy. Uh, I think it's the Orchids for Dummies guy said that you wanted to get with me about doing a collaboration. Uh, and you know how to reach me anytime. Okay. All right. And the gardening zebra, I started gardening a couple years ago, but I'm now filling my brain with as much information as I can get. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much. Because that's when I was filling my brain with information and I started seeing that I had misformed or deformed leaves on my okra plant. And then the okra, it was producing really well. And then all of a sudden it started curling under. I said, something's wrong. I don't look under the leaves. I didn't see no uh, aphids. I didn't see any leaf miners. I didn't see nothing. And someone told me, Pull, look at the, the weakest one and pull it up. This was about two years ago. I pulled it up. And I saw the roots had these little nodules, like a chain of pearls. Mm. Like, I can't explain. Like, you see that thread there? Then it had a little nodule, and then a little thread, then a little nodule. It was nematode root damage that is caused by a fungus from bad nematodes got into my soil. I had never seen it before other than pictures when I was doing, you know, studying books and that type of thing and, re and on online investigating stuff. So take it all in. Whoever was saying that, Miss Gardening Zebra, she said, I'm filling my brain with as much information as I can get. I had filled that image in my brain. And when something told me the Holy Spirit, I know what it was. I pulled it up and I saw those roots. My mind instantly pulled out that information. And I said, I think this is nematode damage. This is a fungus that's called from bad nematode. I ran in the house, got on it, and that's what it was. And you could buy beneficial nematodes to get rid of it. You can buy um, crab lay, crushed crab lay shells. I got that from Amazon. And it cleared it up a lot, and I got, they got the beneficial nematodes. But the next year, it was right back. So I, last thing on my list was solarization of the bed. And that's when you move everything out of the bed, and you put at least six mil liter plastic on top of a greenhouse and let the solar sun heat it up, and it'll kill the fungus and kill the nematodes. There was still some in there about the second year. Then I did the marigolds everywhere. And when I pulled up my greens this year, no nematodes. When I pulled up my tomatoes and my okra and my peppers last summer, no nematodes. So now I don't have to grow as many, but I'm going to still put some of them in the bed. 
because you're not going to eradicate it when you're talking about working with a prima culture way of doing things or an organic way of doing things, a natural way. You're not going to wipe nothing out completely. So every year I'm still going to put some in the bed. Okay, Ty Lily, I had a question earlier, Miss Cheryl. I'm going to go back to Ty Lily. And get your question, dear. I'm going all the way up. Uh, before I, I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to go to Yankee Sisters' question. I'm going to get you, Ty Lily. I haven't forgot. I have two elderberry trees coming. First time growing fruit trees. Any tips? I put mine, excuse me, in containers. Uh, they're going to be rooted trees. I put mine in containers, and I put one in the ground, and they all both are doing the same until I know where I want to put them. So I'm just going to keep – I put two in the ground and two in containers, and I'm giving my daughter two, the two in the containers. Okay, Skinny Boy Randy said, unless you cover the dark tape, or another cup. I know what you're answering if, about the damage to the roots. And here's another question from Terry Span. Is it possible to grow grapes from seeds? Yes, but it's going to take a very long time. If you have time, go for it. Like I have two uh, pecan trees I showed you uh, the other day in my last video. And then I have one that's about three years old and it's about five feet. I don't know if it's going to bear fruit, and nuts are fruit trees. And some people tell me, but I'm probably going to have to um, graft branches of different pecans to it. I don't know, but it's very, very strong. But I've, I've always been told that it takes a long time, or red, it takes a long time for grapes to grow from seeds. I grew rooted plants from Isom's Nursery of Concord Grapes. And noble muscadines. Muscadines took me three years to get a good crop. I got over nine or ten pounds. I made wine this year for the first time. And then last year, we just got enough to eat. So if I were you, Terry, you could buy grapes so cheap on sale, Lowe's, Home Depot, or go online. I wouldn't waste my time. Yes, gardening with skinny boy Randy, exactly what I said. The clear cups bring mold and it burns up the roots, especially in our sun. Louisiana gardening guru, I'm still going to go back and get that other lady's question. What are your top five tomatoes to grow? I don't like the way the celebrity and the early uh, girl look because they are hybrids, not GMOs, genetically modified brand, uh, brands, but they are they're modified to be uh, pest resistant and heat tolerant. So they will have to be in my top two. But they, they, they look like the regular tomatoes that you get out of the store, except when you cut them, they're not orange and white and inside they're red through and through. Okay. So I don't save the seeds from the early girl and the celebrity. I buy them. All of the other seeds that I have, all the other varieties that I grow, I, I really don't have a favorite. I do like the Amana Orange. It's a big orange. Uh, I like Jet Star. I like the, uh, and I might be pronouncing some of this stuff wrong, uh, Costaludo Genevieve. That was a good tomato. I grew that. I grew about three different types of uh Green tomatoes that stay green when they're ripe, the white giant, the emerald green. Can't think of the other one right now. I got seeds behind me, but I got them from Baker Creek. I do like mortgage lifter when you want to, you know, show off and have a nice little video with a great big old tomato. Those are cool. And brandy wine, like what I'm growing. And I also like romas. When I'm doing a lot of candy and making pasta sauce or tomato sauce or tomato paste, I like the uh, aromas, different types of aromas, because it's a very hearty, meaty uh, tomato that makes good pasta sauce. So I hope I've answered your question. Okay, now let me go back up here, and I'm still looking for that other question. 
Brenda says she saw us drinking the tea. And then next, this week, I'm going to do some sun tea, Brenda, in one of my videos. And I'm going to show you how we make it in the sun. Erica Jones says she just received the catalog and she said they have a lot of different varieties of hibiscus. What you want to know is where you live, if you can grow a tropical one or if you can grow a cold hardy or tolerant. And either one of them will help you with lowering your blood pressure, providing that you grow it organically. Uh, Miss um, Tommy's Bites. You asked me a question on my last video about neem oil. I had it. In. I'm still looking for the other question. No, do not use those products that have neem oil that are uh, insecticides or pesticides. They have a lot of chemicals in them. Okay? You ask me my opinion. I, my opinion is no. But I know people do use... Um, seven and, uh, you know, a lot of chemicals and stuff, but I had breast cancer, so I stay away from that. And I think you have lupus. I have a real good, sharp mind with long-term memory. I just get confused because I'm a senior citizen. But I think you got lupus, and if I were you, I would stay away from chemicals because you, know, you don't need anything to compromise your immune system. And I admire what you're doing, okay? So get the pure cold pressed neem oil you only have to buy it every few years you don't use a lot of it you know and i hate that they make all these different neem oil sprays and they only got a little bit of neem oil in it once again fooling you okay all right so erica you want to find out what zone you live in if you know garden zone and what you can tolerate in your uh in your garden okay i'm still looking for the question i kept some seeds for my soursop fruit and i'm growing the soursop plant from seeds i hope it grows well you know i got let me see I, you all know i got you've seen you've shown them to you before uh january they are four years old or was it three i don't know i gotta go back and look at my fruit trees but I grew them from seeds that I bought on eBay. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I need you to type in your question, whoever that was that I'm looking for, because I can't find it. Uh, Essie says she's almost getting to the finish line. I hear you. Look, look like around half of us have not Hit the butt. Oh, okay. Thank you, Tia. Okay, I'm going to go all the way back down to the bottom, sweetheart, because I didn't see your question. If it's all caps, I will answer your question. And then I answer Tommy's question. I'm going to still answer the question about fermenting comfrey and container gardening. And somebody did a super chat for me. I think my moderator said thank you, but I'm thanking you again. Okay, question came in from Tony B. How big of a container can you grow your sweet potatoes in? I found some that I had forgot about, and they have sprouted. Can I plant it whole? Uh, Tony B., I have a video on that. Go to my playlist. In fact, I think it's the. I think it had like eighteen thousand views on it. I found some sweet potatoes in my pantry. They were sprouting. Uh, I took them and just put them in the soil. Uh, at least a 25-gallon quart. This year, I grew most of them in a 17-gallon blue mainstay pot you can get at Walmart. And, uh, but anyway, this particular one, you can go look at the video. You'll see that I stuck them down in the soil. And then as the leaves started uh, growing, I just took a milk bottle that Bree and them have. Look you know, small at the top, old-fashioned milk bottle, and uh, put the leaves in it and st still stuck the bottle in the ground. And then they root it. And, I mean, we, we harvested a lot of sweet potatoes. But I think that is the largest or the most viewed video that I have. So I think I have a playlist on most views. Okay? All right. Um... 
grown lady Lynn wants to know, is it too early to start married goals inside? If you have the room and the ability to keep them under a grow light, I would start in February because they, uh, the last of February, 1st of March, because where's the merry go? They grow kind of slow, but they grow very strong. There are no roots that you can see. And I planted these marigolds first. And so look how small that plant is. But once they take off, they're going to take off. You can go to farmersalmanac.com, put in your garden zone, and, and ask that question. They'll give you when you should plant. Also, your local extension office should have a, a sheet, whatever your local university is. And they'll give you a date that you can start seeds so that you won't have them... You know, unless you got the room. If you got a lot of room like I got, then you can start them today. It won't matter because you can just keep potting them up into a larger, larger pot. Okay. Do you, can you keep your pecan tree in a container? Uh, I'll have it in the ground now. Uh, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it because a pecan tree is huge. But, if, for example, if you live in an apartment or your rental house and, you know, it's not your forever home or whatever the situation is, you can cook, probably keep that tree in a big container. I have some 40-gallon pots. I have some 25-gallon pots that I have trees in. It can be done, but I wouldn't recommend it because it grows very vigorously. I hope I've answered your question. Okay, what do you think about the blackberries that don't have thorns? Are they okay to eat? Of course. Yeah, it's just a variety. The thorns, like I have on this, can y'all see this? This is a calamondin tree. I got from U.S. Citrus. Since the pandemic, they stopped selling trees. They're just going to do have their own orchard and sell the fruit. I bought that tree when it was this tall. I took three feet off of it and brought it in the house. Okay, and it has thorns covered in it. I'm gonna eat every piece of fruit on there, me and my children and my grandchildren, when it when it bears fruit. I read somewhere that when you start putting on the thorns, the thorns are there to protect the fruit from predators like birds. They're not gonna attack that tree and just peck on it, peck on it, peck on it, or or, or either what was it, the blackberries or the blueberries if you have thorn or thornless. There's nothing wrong with them. It's nothing there's no rule that says if it got thorns on it, you can't eat it. It's just a, the way God created and designed it to protect it from birds eating up all your berries. Or humans. Like I told you, I had I smothered my grass because every time the lawn service would come back there, they start eating my fruit. And you know, guys, when you are a new fruit tree grower, I started growing fruit trees seven years ago, I know every piece of fruit on that tree. I know it's got six. You don't come do my yard and leave, there's only three left. <laughs> so I stopped doing that. Okay, Myra McCain had to get a grow tea to get ready, an early start. Want to grow a lot of romaine. Very good. And who is this answering a good question? Dan's free. Thank you, Dan. Thorny blackberry varieties are more resistant to disease than the thornless. It's a it's, it's a protective uh, base there. It's got something to do with. Mm -mm, makes sense. Thank you, Miss Irene. Yes, Bernie, I'm going to eat every piece of fruit on there. And if it's a bad piece of fruit, we're going to cut that part off. And we still going to enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, pick a pop because they can go fast, but please go ahead and plant them like Michelle said. Okay, thank you, Tommy. Uh, Yankee sister Ramona, welcome to your new love of gardening. Man, I'm going to tell you, I thought I could garden, but it wasn't until I started growing almost everything I can get my hands on from seeds that I fell in love, deeply in love, passionately in love with gardening. Because it's amazing to me. Like when I told you, I just plucked off the little leaves. 
and they are completely different. That first leaf is completely different from the rest of the tomato leaves. The first leaf on this Texas Star Hibiscus, it, it didn't have all these indentations or mm, zigzags in it the way the rest of the leaves. It's just amazing to me. Who's that Dan talking about the thorns are more resistant to disease and stuff? It's amazing to me that God created those thorns like that to protect that fruit. Because what brings the disease to the plants in most cases? Insects or fungus. They're going to stay away from the thorns. Again, thank you, Dan. Very good. Garden with Bernie, learn how to prick plants from you, Lady Cheryl. Yes. Uh, Ernie the hat maker said, dang, girl, you're so gentle. I feel like I can hear her voice because if you watch somebody's videos all the time and they comment on your video, you can hear them saying it in your mind. Or am I the only one in this room crazy in this chat? Can y'all hear people answering? I can hear Dan's accent, just subtle. I can hear... Randy Boy talking about Miss Michelle, don't worry about it. We ain't doing pretty. We ain't doing pretty. We ain't doing no pretty garden. We just trying to grow some food. <laughs> I can hear when they when they comment. <laughs> so uh she, Ernie the Hatmaker was telling me, uh, she said, I love how gentle you are with your plants. Y'all can because I'm an old hairstylist. You can't be yanking on people's hair when you give them a relax or you curling it or you rolling you can't you know so all of that dexterity comes in handy you have to be very careful with those plants because those roots are very delicate hey Cynthia, good to see you hey gardening with cocktails and joy i think i already spoke to you hey wanda b it's a grammy b and a wanda b okay all right so did i ask every, no it was somebody else had a question i couldn't find it my aunt had over a hundred grapefruit on her tree. She could tell if one was missing. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. She said that 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 branch is not uh, all the way leaning all the way over like it was yesterday. Somebody took about two grapefruits from it. You can tell. <laughs> now that's what I do want, though. I do want a grapefruit uh, tree. And I want a blood orange tree. But I said I wasn't going to buy any more trees for a minute. Because I, I really don't have no room. <laughs> I really don't. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? There was a per Ty Lily. Thank you, Auntie. You type the question again because I couldn't find it. Good night, Master Gardener 242. Thank you so much. Yankee sister, dental assistant, I have dexterity. Yes. You manipulate those fingers all the time. Because I can feel them with my right hand and do those seeds with my left hand. Uh-huh. Because I had to teach left-handed people in reverse, everything that we do a right on a right-handed person does. Okay, Lady Cheryl, do you know how many chill hours a mild lemon tree needs? It's not a lot. I keep mine in the greenhouse all year, uh, not all year round, but during the winter. So they don't never get the cold, cold, cold like um, a lot of citrus do. So you don't have to concern yourself with chill hours with a lemon tree. Because they don't like to take... They don't like temperatures below about 27. Dan, correct me if I'm wrong. And the um, key limes, they're more delicate than the Meyer lemons. So you need to bring them lemon trees inside. It depends on what zone that you're in, blessed to. I, t I bring mine either in the house, and now I got a bigger greenhouse. They, they stay in the greenhouse. I'm going to sneak me some room. What do you need grass for? I know that's right, Auntie. You. Get all the grass that you want in the front yard. <laughs> I have gotten fruit here in the Bahamas. All right. Thank you from the Bahamas. Okay. Now, while I'm getting some questions ready, I want you guys to write down 
you yes if you have a um yes if you have a, a content creator on YouTube and your garden zone. I'm not sure if I'm asking about a question right. How many apple trees to bear fruit? Oh, okay, Angela, good. You know what I noticed? The 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 um the um vanilla that I put in the bourbon is breaking down faster than the one I put in the vodka. I don't drink vodka and I don't drink bourbon. But I'm making some vanilla extract so I can give away its gifts. Carson World is in 7B. Denise Backyard Garden is 8A, just like me. Lynn, 682, is in 6B. Oh, you use using bourbon. Good, Angela. You're going to, yeah, it's breaking down better. Which, if it breaks down more and just start disintegrating, because you got to shake it up like once a week. I did it every day for the first two days. I put it right on my table. Uh, but now I don't. I just go once a week. Sonya Trail has 8A. Unicorn Lady Tech is 8A in North Texas like me. Dan? Was that Dan? I thought you was... Oh, 9B. I'm getting ready to say I thought I saw Dan's Permaculture Food Forest in 8B. But that was 9B. Best yet got weather like me, Lolita Edwards A, 7A, Mary Campbell. Yes, she has a channel. She's in Zone 8A, Alabama, and Veggie Farm. Guys, I don't care how big your channel is. Start filming stuff. You'll be amazed how far you've come when you go back and look at them. Man, I was making 38-second videos, <laughs> two-minute videos, three-minute videos. Some I could barely talk because it was right after I had surgery. Okay? Somebody got a new channel. Cherry Span, zone two or three. Where are you? That's cold. Rodney Parker Jr. is in 8B. Althea is in 9B. So nobody here is in like 10. Yes, Master Garden 242 in the Bahamas. Okay, I'm going to check you out. I was wondering where you were gardening with cocktails with joy because I saw all that snow. I don't know if I left a message when I watched your video yesterday too. Um, yesterday or the day before, the sunroom. You know, you have a beautiful place there. And I can tell you have a beautiful she shed. And Mary Campbell is in Alabama. And UT, I know you're in a cold zone. Yes, 6B. You and your wife, Angel, do remarkably well for it to be so cold. Mm-hmm. Angela Busy B is in 7-8. Boy, Angela, when I saw your uh, uh, land all cleaned up, I said, "Man, I got. I wish I was young like that. I I gotta get my. I gotta get on the ball. I got a lot of stuff to clean up." Uh, Tia is in six A slash five B. Loretta King, no channel, but she's in eight A. And who is that? Is in New Orleans, Gardner 99. Root shoot and garden boost just started, but yes, zone 8A, Oak Cliff, Texas. I, I taught beauty school in Oak Cliff, Golden Triangle Shopping Center in the 80s. I don't know if they have a beauty college still there. Okay. Okay, we're going to get some seeds away. I have a question. Remember, when it comes up on my screen first, I'm going all the way down. That's who will get the seeds.
looking for my seeds. And I'm gonna show you about Dan. He is so cool. If I had time, I would have did this too. He gave you a thank you cover sheet about buying the uh, seeds and all the information you need about how to grow them. Okay. That was really cool. My son is thinking about doing something like this to Dan, but he wants to do it with the uh, tree cuttings. We'll see. Okay. Best yet. Tia. Uh, Tommy. Don't you all worry about participating, Miss Irene. Don't participate because I'm going to send you guys something. I got Miss Irene's address. I need yours, Tommy. Just go to my email and, um, and send me your address. Okay, let me go to Audrey Patterson. Is she still in here? I want some clarity. I don't want anybody to leave here and not get their question answered. I'm not sure if I'm asking the question right. How many apple trees to bear fruit? I think I know what you want to know. You want to know if you need more than one tree for them to cross-pollinate to bear fruit. Am I right? And if that's what you're asking me, some trees are self-fertile, meaning they don't need any other tree near it for the bees or pollinators to come back and forth and cross-pollinate. Self-fertile. Some of them need a pollinator. Two good sources, online stores, to look up information that listed for you is Stark, S-T-A-R-K, Brothers, and IsonsNursery.com. They will, you put your zone in and they'll show you what apple trees are good to grow in your zone and if you need a pollinator. Was that, was that your question, Audrey, if you're still in here? Hey, Hypercentric, good to see you. Good ideas for more products. Okay, now, uh, before I do the thing, I'm going to bring up two products to you. This one is my creamy body butter. My creamy body butter is four ounces. I'm going to my website. Make sure, because sometimes I watch the playback and I might say something um, wrong. I have good intention. But I want you guys to know that I first started making this in 1993. It's a creamy body butter that has shea butter, avocado butter, mango butter, and then I infuse it with shea oil, jojoba oil, and grapeseed oil. Jojoba and grapeseed is just like your natural oil, very close to it. And it's lightly scented with that Texas Star hibiscus that I grow and lavender and lemongrass. So it's very mild. And it comes with a tamper-proof, I don't want to pull it all the way off, but yeah. So you'll know that nobody has used it before it gets to you. And then I put a little thing of tape around it, uh, black tape. It's one of my best-selling products. This one is called Hair Growth Promoter. Hair Growth Promoter, again, comes with a tamper-resistant lid or label. Let me go pull it up. And it has vitamins A, D, and E, Indian hemp. I know what's in it, but I, sometimes I get a little confused. And it has rosemary oil, olive oil, wheat germ oil, almond oil. And I also told you that it's really good for people that have high blood pressure, have damage. I have that issue. Diabetes, I'm not diabetic, but I'm pre-diabetic. And you can see here I had thyroid surgery. Okay? So I started making this one when I lost all of my hair when I went through breast cancer. And I, you know, everything that I learned working for a chemical manufacturer and being a hairstylist and educator, I put all of that in here. And this is my number one selling product. Okay? So I hope you all give me a chance. Try it. If it's anybody in here that has used any of my products, 
Uh, let me know how, what you think about them. Sonia Trail, what about bald spots? Now, I'm not going to lie to you. If you have tra traction alopecia because your mom or somebody put them braids on your ponytails and, and you lost all your hairline all the way back to here, or you have a bald spot because of a nervous condition, alopecia areata is what it's called, and the hair hasn't grown there for years, this is not going to grow it back. But if you have like a nervous, you've been stressed through the pandemic and you had some shedding and you could feel a little stubs, hair growing back, yes. Because no matter what anybody tells you, you don't need edge control products. Whatever will grow your edges back or a bald spot back will grow your hair all over. Okay. So, no, I'm not going to sit here and just say, oh, yeah, try it, blah, blah, blah. See, my help come from the Lord. The Holy Spirit may convict your heart and you buy something, but the, the Holy Spirit is, is the Trinity. It's all connected there together. So I'm not going to sit here and lie just to try to make a sale because then I wouldn't have no integrity. And you wouldn't believe nothing that I told you about gardening or hair or skin or anything else. So I'm going to tell the truth. If you've been wearing, um, not when I say you, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. If you've been wearing lace front wigs and glue all on your hair and you're pulling them out and you and you snatch that hair out around the edges and it keloids over it, which means that it makes scar tissue on top of scar tissue on top of scar tissue, it's not going to grow back. Without having a surgical uh, procedure done, hair plugs put in. Like your man, LeBron James, King James. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember how he was real, real bald. He had surgery. So, yes, uh, gardening with cocktails with Joy said the butter keeps your feet, legs, ash free, and haven't been ashy this winter. Hey, Rhonda, nice to see you here. Yankee sister said the best products yet. I love what I have ordered from Lady Cheryl. Mm-hmm. Barb Brownlee said she got two small rechargeable bug zappers. Okay, good. Somebody told me they had that at the um, dollar store. And you too, and his wife Angel used the dry the butter for the dry skin. Mm-hmm. In the dry months and light eczema. Yeah. Bria has eczema. But I told y'all last week I keep her butter down. <laughs> and sometimes she'll come over here, like when it was warm outside, she'll come over here. I didn't have time the moment to put my shea butter on. And I said, baby, she know I, I got you. Okay. Okay, Miss Irene tried the Shea Body Butter. She put it on her dry heels every night. You can put it on your lips. You can put it on your lips. Myra McCain is in here. She was here earlier, and she says, I have nut allergies. She emailed me about the products and wanted to know, can I make her something or, you know. No. I said, I, no, I can't do that. Because it could be little particles floating in the air. And then somebody scroll all up and send me a picture. All the years that I have been in business and selling products and doing hair, I have never been sued. And I'm real big on sanitation. So when I'm making my products, I have on gloves. Now, y'all might see me. I love to put my hands in dirt. But my products is different. Okay? All right. My trees are from Ison's, and you are correct about the information there. Yes! I'm not going to steer you wrong. I'm not going to give you any information that I have not used myself or thoroughly researched. How much do you save? This is a good question. How much do you save on average on groceries? Your inventory dictates your grocery list. Yes. I don't spend hardly no money. I have one vice, decaf coffee in the k -peg. Pods, whatever you want to call it. I don't know why I never can remember it right. I occasionally buy some orange juice. I buy maybe five pounds of flour, cornmeal, rice for Bria a year. And I put it in those half gallon um, mason jars. Every now and then I buy some unsweetened fruit. Uh, in the can, few crackers, black pepper, because I never tried to grow it. 
Guys, I don't, I don't spend a lot of money on groceries. Smoked turkey legs or wings. Today, Bree and I had soup. Came right off the pantry that I made year before last. She ate every bit of it. She's the only grandchild that I have that will eat everything that comes out of that garden. You know why? She's the only grandchild that I've kept because I started keeping her when I retired. So I've had her the whole time while my daughter worked. She eats everything. We opened up, I accidentally opened up chow chow, uh, uh caramelized onions. <laughs> I didn't turn the light on in the kitchen when I heated up our greens. And I reached and got the wrong jar, opened it up. And I said, oh, this ain't chow chow. This is caramelized onions. She said, can I taste it, big mama? I said, sure. Mm, I like it. <laughs> she, so she eats now caramelized onions. Y'all seen the video? <laughs> Caramelized onions. We have chow chow. We have green. She'll tell you. She loves it. So when your children see what you're doing, yes, they will eat more. How do you know you are behind? Behind what, baby? From growing seeds? I keep a journal. If it's not clicked, it is. Please don't forget to hit the like button. What about ball spots? Thank you. Cocktail and creation. She loves the hot. Yes, please send me the pictures. I'll put it on my website. Your platform and others are my tools. All of you gardening and candy. Thank you. Uh, because I am doing the products and doing the orders and stuff, I'm not going to do, be doing as many canning videos as I have been. Yes, I will be canning, but I won't have time to shoot this and shoot that while I'm doing other stuff. And I recommend that you check out Homestead Heart. She calls me auntie too. I love her. Body butters. Yes, yes. Thank you, guys. Okay, I, I think I got everybody. Did I ever get that question, Tia? Okay, I'm reading you Tommy Bites about them leggy ones. The only, only, only thing that I recommend that a leggy, leg, a leggy, that you can pot up and bury them real deep is tomatoes. Because tomatoes have a really fibrous root. And everywhere where you see that peach fuzz, you can bury this plant all the way to here. But if you do peppers like that, they're going to die of root rot. If you do cucumbers, any other plant than tomato plant. UT is in here. He'll tell you. Yes, Homestead Heart. Gardening with Bernie, you have a leggy cucumbers. If they're too leggy and they don't toughen up with a fan on them or more or closer to the grow light, start some more. Because you don't want a leggy plant to give you leggy results all through the grow growing season. You have plenty of time to start some more. I take you, throw them away. Who is that best yet? So she started something three times. I don't forgot what it was. I'm telling you, if it starts out bad, it's just like a relationship. If a man mistreats you and you're just dating, drop him because he's a loser. If he values you, he's going to treat you like a queen. Same thing with these plants. If you value them, you're going to give them everything that they need to nourish and to grow. Don't start off trying to pamper and prop up a bad seedling. You're going to lose some along the way. That's why they're so cheap. Because you don't, you, you don't need that. You know, you, you don't need all the seeds in the package. Okay, Wanda B, I asked about your hair products for my daughter's bleached hair, and you said to email you. I didn't because she had already took the product and used them. <laughs> it helped stop the breakage. Oh, thank you, Wanda. Thank you so much. Yeah, when you bleach your hair, you got to be careful. Because you can bleach your hair, but you can't bleach it and do a bleach and a relaxer. They don't go together. Okay, Tommy, I hear what you're saying. 
It probably wasn't that leggy. It probably wasn't that leggy, Tom, Tommy. You were probably just borderline. I've seen some people, <laughs> you know what I mean, young lady, when they're like six inches long and drooping all over, and they're still growing them little strings. Okay. Wanda B, thank you, thank you, thank you. What does leggy mean? Leggy means, okay, let's see this tomato. See how this tomato is standing straight up? Leggy means it grew a lot, but then it started limping over and just kept growing. This plant right here, this early girl, next week I'm going to plant this in a bigger pot all the way up to here. Because this has fibrous roots. Those other plants, cucumbers, peppers, blah, 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 blah. You can't bury them real deep. They're only going to die of root rot. Miss Queenie Playroom, thank you. Throw them laying things in the compost. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Queenie, I'm sending you two packages of seeds. I'm writing down right here. Miss Queenie, please get my email ad address and I'll send you some seeds. And Tommy, you you uh you already got seeds coming. My mustard seedlings are really leggy. Throw them away in your compost and start again, Rhonda. Either you didn't put them under a light two inches quick enough. If they got real leggy, uh, yeah, don't, don't waste your time. Thank you, Auntia Cheryl, Lady Cheryl's Natural Products at gmail.com. I wanna, I wanna thank you. I love you too, baby. My, um, my, my, my sister-in-law said, "I love you more," and there's nothing you can do about it. Because <laughs> people used to say, "I love you." She said, "I love you more." And I love you more. I love you, and she said, "And nothing you can do about it," and that stops it. Okay, Cheryl, you some lady plants you can build up. I don't waste my time. Unless it's the tomato plant. Because seeds are too cheap. My mom had a severe reaction to a medical procedure. Her skin peeled by the layers. I gave her some of your total body oil. Her skin responded by the minute. Thank you so much. Thank you, Trinity 48. My mother uh, had that same issue that happened to her. She had to have a lot of surgeries. And she had a heart condition. And... Uh, the anesthesia and the medication that they gave her caused her hair, and her skin was just peeled. I mean, it was awful. So I understand what you're saying. I'm telling you guys, if you want to experiment with leggy seedlings, go right ahead. I don't waste my time unless it's a tomato plant. Two inches from the plant. Yes, Rhonda. And that lady talked about her mother had that procedure. I'm glad she's doing much better. Oh, Denise backyard, first time backyard garden, first time growing strawberries from seeds. Can I get a berry this year? Yes, but it's going to be real little. It took me three years for my Chandler strawberries that I got the seeds on Amazon for them to be a nice sized fruit. But those little bitty strawberries that you get the first year, some people said pinch them off and let your roots keep developing. I picked some off and I ate some. And those little bitty strawberries, they be so sweet. I don't know why, but they I guess because it's so small, all the sugar there. I have leggy spinach. I would get rid of it. Auntie, I had leggy peppers last year. A great waste of my time and money. Y'all going to learn today. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful, Ebony. That's a good investment. Apples and pomegranate trees. Very good. Okay, who was that? That was Tia Tucker. I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at somebody's comments and I'm going to send them some seeds. I'm not going to play any games today. Oh, Miss Queenie's Playroom. Deborah White, thank you for that. I have locks. Yeah, I, guys, I had locks down my back. I put it in some of the videos. I was probably post. I just got tired of them. Um, so I recommend that you use the hair milk and the hair oil on locks. But I'm going to, every, every Monday, I'm going to show 
talk about a few products. So these two, when you have natural hair, shampoo your hair, towel dry, oil your hair with the hair growth promoter, comb it through, section at a time, don't use a lot. I see a lot of videos where they got so much stuff on the hair. Now this is a wig, I don't mind telling you. They have so much product. I'm going to, how can they afford that? Like they got a whole half a jar on it. You use very little of the butter. All the products, a little goes a long way. Then you comb it through, starting at the bottom, combing it up to the top. That way you don't just snatch your hair out by taking tangles and knots at the scalp. Okay? Then after you do that, you let it dry naturally, or you can use the diffuser, or you can sit up under the dryer. When you come out of that dryer, you can do two things. You can put a little air milk or you can put a little oil. Some people tell me it works better when they oil their scalp with a hair growth promoter. Then put that comb it through with the hair milk. And you can put a, a spray bottle. You can put that hair milk in a spray bottle. I'm thinking about, uh, y'all tell me what you think, those of you that got the hair milk. I'm thinking about doing it with a pump or, or a spray bottle. Because it's real thin. It has a, a lot of glycerin and other things that attract moisture to your hair and then let it dry and then they lock it in with the shea butter that's what my daughter does she goes with the hair growth promoter after the shampoo then she puts the hair milk on and then she locks it in with the shea butter after it dries then every morning she just put a little total body oil and just rub it through her hair and maybe a little hair milk you don't need a whole lot of product okay thank you brenda Uh, I had a question about lady cedars. Do I have to start over? Can I, you can grow them if you, Shawanda, if you want, if you got tomatoes, anything else, if they over three or four inches long, I'll throw them in the compost. You just ordered some products today or just now? <coughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't waste my time. I wouldn't waste my time, guys, on leg, leg stuff. I mean, you can if you know if you just like doing an experiment. But I, I've done all the experiments. Okay, okay, Kimberly Johnson. I just saw your your order came in. I'm on my uh, laptop. Thank you so much. You got the hair milk and the creamy body, but I hope you don't mind me saying that out loud. <laughs> Uh, you, it'll go out on, uh, you can email confirmation either tonight or in the morning, and then it will go out on Wednesday. I do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much. I appreciate you giving me a chance. That's all I ask is a chance. Okay, guys. Uh, I, I guess I'll ask one more question so I can get some seeds to... Miss Queenie got two packages of seeds. And I'm going to ask, spray bottle sounds great. Trinity 48, did you buy the hair milk? I want to make sure from somebody, I can't remember everybody's name. Because sometimes your names are different than what you when you purchase something. Okay. Bessie says she used it on a starter locks once a month. And your hair is looking good too, uh, Bessie. Very pretty. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Trinity. Okay, good, good. Okay. Well, I'll order some more of those spray pumps. I must. Mm-hmm. And by the way, let me share this with you, too. I appreciate your help. These labels are small. If you don't see real well, you can't read them real well. But I got to crawl before I can walk. So what I do is I put a card in your order. Kind of like what Dan did with his how to you know do start the seeds. I put a bigger card, a card in there, thanking you for ordering. And if you look on the back, it's in large print how you should use the product. Okay, going forward, I'll, I'm gonna have wraparound labels with larger fonts. But right now, this is what I could afford to do. Um, 
If you go to my playlist and you go to Lady Cheryl's products, you can see at one time I was rocking and rolling before I got sick. I had 150 products. So I had bigger labels and all that kind of stuff. But right now, um, I have to, you know, get, get what I can afford until I build up my clientele. Then I can triple this label and get it bigger. Uh, somebody said, I put the hair, milk in a spray bottle. Yes, thank you, TH. And I don't mind if you email me stuff like that. Your, you know, your opinions, let me know, you know, because we in this really together. I want to make sure that my customers are being taken care of. And the, the smell, can I have the pump spray with mines to try it out? Uh, root shoot and garden beds, I may not have any right now. I have to order that. Uh, but I'll check it out. Angela, I used to do a shampoo, uh, conditioner everything and right now i don't have enough clientele for it but if i do i'll send you some complimentary to try okay now what i was going to ask you guys a question because i want to send c's to somebody i'm gonna send it to the person who asks who recommend i put the pump in the air who was it oh uh, th I put the hair milk in a spray bottle. My sister does the same thing. Okay, so I'm just going to give it to you, babe. We're not going to play no game. T-H. T-H. That's your whole name? T-H? Pump C's. Send me your, your mailing address and I'll send you some C's. And Yankee Sister, the hair milk, the body butter, total body oil, and the fragrance oil, is a combination of lemongrass, lavender, and hibiscus. And they all smell. So you can put it like that on your post points, and your man can smell your neck, put a little here and here, then he can sniff on your hair. It's, uh, it's not overpowering, it's very, very subtle. Okay? So yes, ma'am. Now some people told me that the hair oil was a little too strong. So I diluted it. So I want to know good or constructive criticism. It was a lady, she called me and said, um, and Brenda Allen said, yes, a spray bottle is better for the hair milk. Um, she she texted me and she said, uh, not texted me, uh, emailed me and said, the oil is a little bit too strong for the cologne or something that I wear. Can I cut it? And she wanted to know, what can I cut it with? And I told her almond oil. And she said, good, because I have that. So it worked out. And I, and I cut the smell down some. And then also I offer it un, unscented. Okay, I love the fact that Yankee Sister said, Mill Millicent, don't give up. You can do it. We all have had failures. The rewards make up for everything. Yankee Sister, I'm going to send you two packages of seeds. I love your camaraderie. And that's so true. We have to lift each other and send and... Um, Motivate and, and, you know, and inspire each other. Yankee sister. Now, make sure that you, when you email, you say, Miss Cheryl, this is Yankee sister. My mailing address is da 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 Okay? Somebody ordered some product from me through PayPal. Uh, I think it was yesterday. and But they let me know that what their name was on YouTube. And I appreciate that. Okay? Because I won't know. I won't know it's Yankee sister if you send me so cause I messed up one time and somebody told me I they, they want some seeds. And I said, I went back and checked my live video. You didn't win any seeds from me. I don't mean no harm. I'm trying to put it as polite as I, as I could. Then they gave me, and I said, the person that won the seeds was da 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 and da da da. She said, I am da 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 da. Or he said, I don't remember. And I said, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> So make sure you put on the I'm Yankee sister and your mailing address. So three people want seeds tonight. TH, Yankee sister, and Miss Queenie. Okay, I got you. They may not go out until the end of the week, but I got you. And my moderators, you'll be looking for something from me. Tommy, I think I just need your address. I have everybody else's. I think. Miss Irene, you might want to send me yours again, too. Okay? All right. As soon as you get me that. Can you use the body butter on your head? Yes, Vicky. Yes. 
for your hair and your scalp. And you only, and Angela, thank you. Use a little product and massage it in. Thank you, Angela. And Unicorn Lady said, Red Texas Star Hibiscus, you must have gotten in here late. It takes a long time. I show one, two, three, four, five stages of the seeds. It can take anywhere from two days to two or three months. On the average, it takes about a month and a half. Be and you got to keep them moist, Unicorn Lady. Keep them moist on the top. If you let them dry out, they will not germinate. Grown lady, grown lady. Somebody laughing about something. <laughs> okay, who putting frost cloths on strawberries? They're very cold tolerant. Gardening with Bernie. You must live in a cold, cold climate. Thank you, Best Jeff, for telling them to watch that seed starting playlist. Okay, guys, I'm only a longer than I plan on being. 76 Auntie, I love it when you said leggy peppers last year. What a waste of time. They get too leggy, guys. You you may luck up and get one or two, but I'm telling you. Put them two inches from the plant, Rhonda. Okay, that's it, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I need to hear from my seed winners. You can go um, and look at any video except this one because I haven't put any editing in it yet. I'll do it when we when we um, uh, end this video. I'll put all my information in. But you can go back and look at the live feed. And hopefully this video won't disappear. Because that was a hurting feeling. I know I had over 800 likes. And then the next one I got up, I didn't have any could find the video like two days later or something like that. Okay, good night everybody. You know I love you. And God loves you too. Good night.